It's a change behaviour program based around looking at your own personal circumstances, your own local environment. This program really gives you insight as to what the likely fire event will be in your neighbourhood, what you can expect, what to do specifically to prepare yourself and for your family and also specifically for your property. It also helps you connect with your neighbours and those people around you and share perhaps what your intentions are, what your plans are and then to understand what else the people around you are doing. The benefits of the program far outweigh the commitment that's put in. I think Fire Guard's an excellent program because it's set in the local community so the CFA facilitator comes to you. You can invite um, as many people as you like within your small community and it allows for both um, partners to come, so husbands and wives to come along and learn and make the same decisions together about what, what their plans are going to be and understanding the types of things you need to do to protect yourself. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I think anything at all that involves a forum with something like this is extremely good. It's, uh, it's informal, um, people uh, throw ideas at one another, the convener will throw questions and challenge people in relation to decisions that they might have made. I think the main reason for us was to f try and find some correct information which is what I feel we get from the CFA. I mean, I know it varies from time to time as they find out more and more things, but nevertheless, you feel you're being kept up to date with what's important. I've had a number of community fire guard groups that come together for the first time for their first meeting and they're used to waving to one another in the street and they're, so they, they consider themselves to be friendly, but then to come together and actually meet up understand that their kids go to the same school or that they have the same sort of friends and um, it takes it that little bit further than just coming together for a bit of information about doing a fire preparedness plan. That's one of the greatest benefits I think Community Fire Guard I've seen over the 10 years has provided is it brings the neighbourhood together when we're quite often we're too busy um, and then what I've seen is those relationships continue. Communication around fire guard issues and home um, preparation happens um, throughout the year. It's not just confined to um, the annual meetings that we've been having. From a community point of view, this is good. It's too easy in an area like this where uh, unless you go searching, you can't see your next door neighbour's house. It's very easy, I think, for people to uh, insulate themselves uh, in their own little world, etc., without any community um, contact at all. And so from my point of view, it's good because I know everybody in the neighbourhood, etc., on first name terms. There are so many things you can join here that it's fairly easy to connect with this community but no definitely it'd be one of the things that's helped us to. Within the group people already have or carry a little bit of knowledge already so it's also having them recognise they already carry some knowledge and some understanding. The person who's coming in from the CFA isn't the expert, the group actually learn together. And that's the key with any kind of adult learning change behaviour program is that they learn together. You are providing with some facts and some information, but that's shared and, and essentially then they can bounce off what, they, what their perceptions or understanding or knowledge is and then you build from there. And we know through just by sharing stories and sharing similar circumstances, there's a bit of a validation in what they, what they hear and how they feel and having part of that connectedness as I spoke about before, they're coming together with people that they know and they're comfortable with. It was very much a two-way conversation. Um, we felt very comfortable asking questions. Um, as I said, there was opportunity to, to walk around properties and ask specific questions about what you should and shouldn't do with that particular property. I think it takes the pressure off a little bit if you're in a group. Uh, it allows um, all personalities to become comfortable rather than, I think one-on-one -on -one can be a little bit intimidating um, and I'm not sure you always learn that well. I think that often you learn from others asking questions and others giving their, um, their experience. I think group learning is, is, is terrific because um, what I find is that people will ask questions that you've and, and get answers for for questions that you'd never thought to, to, to ask. There were some indications coming out of the 2006 fires um, that people um, prepare for fires and prepare physically. So they get their house ready, they get their plan together, they have their equipment all ready. And so physically they're switched on for it. 
but psychologically when the fire occurs or when they're impacted by fire or if they leave the area because of the fire, they really haven't emotionally or psychologically prepared for that. Those community fire guard groups impacted in 2009 really helped them understand what they'd experienced and what they were possibly going through and that, that even through their memories what, what was occurring. Just to get a sense of what you're going to be um, in, you know, facing, I think, um, and, and preparing yourself for that, understanding that, it's definitely very important. It's like you've got a bit of experience so you can apply that to, to your current situation. So absolutely, trying to be mentally prepared, although I'm not sure that you can really understand what it's going to be like, but knowing that it's going to be noisy and it's going to be dark and um, you know, you're not going to be able to hear, use your senses and those sorts of things. But if you've got an awareness of what to expect in a fire or any other situation, then it's going to help you to be resilient and say to yourself when something happens, okay, I was warned about that, it is difficult, it is 24 hours of fighting a fire if I'm going to stay and defend, etc. Knowledge and experience will help to, help to make people resilient. The CFG group and also the courses impress on people uh, just how important it is to be prepared mentally. It's something over the years we've realised ourselves, particularly as we've aged, we've realised that we probably are mentally as well as physically less able to, to cope. And that's why our, strongly our first plan is to, to leave early. We actually decided to do a practice leave according to what we'd written down and you know according to what we thought and so we actually did a practice of packing up and leaving and it was very interesting it was all sorts of snags came up um, and things took us longer than we thought. Self-reliance is probably the key and it's a little bit about what that resilience is about understanding that quite often in these events you may be alone or especially if you're at, in, a fire, in the fire event itself, so if your choice is to stay and defend, quite often um, you may not get assistance from, from emergency services. The event may not necessarily be to the scale that they're expecting, but essentially they have an understanding of what's occurring or what's going on, and they can in some way predict or foresee what is occurring around them. And so in terms of resilience, we talk about the post-event post or the recovery, they're far more capable at recovering or their resilience is far greater because they've understood what's coming, they knew what the, the environment was like and what their risk was and they were prepared and they'd sort of practice their place for, for what they would do. I definitely don't want to be here and, def and try and defend my property. But, um, my plan would definitely be to, to, to leave early with my children. I feel a lot more confident about um, making the right decisions for myself and my family as a result of attending um, a fire guard core group and, and the continuing information that comes from that on an annual basis. It's about um, mental resilience for me. Uh, it's about feeling like I've got the knowledge um, and the plan in place should um, a fire event occur. You definitely need to have more than one plan. I'm a great believer in, the, in, in having a fallback position so that any planning that you've made um, if it doesn't work, or if your plan doesn't work, then you really need that fallback position. And quite obviously a fire plan is going to be a personal thing that in fact is um, peculiar to your own set of circumstances and your own home, um, as distinct from what the guy next door might well have planned. In the fire guard group and, and with the CFA meetings in general, they always make that quite clear you can't expect a fire truck at your door. I say to people, have you got a plan? And, um, and sometimes I say to them, and, and have you written it down? And explain to them why we found it so useful to have, have it written down. I love living here and I wouldn't move, but um, you have to understand the risk and, and the risk to your, to your small little piece of that beautiful, of the beautiful place we live in. <laughs>